find something here that nourishes your heart, feeds your mind, and grows your spirit. My name is Debbie Rake, and I am your worship associate this morning. Be you a spiritual seeker, an atheist, or a theist, Westside is a community of many beliefs, genders, and sexualities, a community of diverse cultural, racial, and class backgrounds, a community of varied abilities and gifts. Some here find inspiration in the great books, others in the great outdoors, and others still in great conversations. I'm in that third camp. Whoever you may be, all are welcome in our inclusive congregation. To newcomers and old friends alike, together we say, welcome. At Westside, we are raising the next generation of Unitarian Universalists, and we want them to know that they are an important part of our community. Several years ago, we chose to be radically inclusive and to adopt a multi-generational worship where our services include all family members. So, welcome to children and youth of all ages. There are a number of announcements included in your order of service. Please take any of them with you that you might need for reminders this week or to share with others. I'd like to call your attention to the fact that the choir is back, baby. <laughs> and I say with just as much enthusiasm, oh, by the way, there's a rehearsal for the upcoming performances uh, starting at 12 today, and everyone is welcome. And I say with just as much enthusiasm, there's a church work day on Saturday morning. All are welcome, 8.30 to 12, Yes, 8.30 to 1. Don't cut off too, shoot, too soon. Okay. And we're, Michael, did, did I? Okay, got it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. For those of you joining us online or visiting with us today, if you are not already on our mailing list, please sign up by clicking the link at the bottom of our westsideuu.org website. And for those of you here in person with us, please take a moment to silence all of your devices. This morning, the reflection will be given by Tanner Trask. Tanner is a longtime member of Westside who says he didn't want to be a part of any organized religion, and yet, here he is and we are grateful. He will share the pictures and stories about our West Side animal friends that have been sent in. Now, I invite you to take a deep breath, and from wherever you are, settle into this sacred space that we create and let us worship together as we listen to this morning's prelude, Introduction of the March of the Royal Lion, it's actually in French, but that's as close as I come. Performed by Dr. Yuki Kumamoto. Test. 
Our opening words are Blessing of the Animals by Susan Carlson. Welcome to all our siblings this morning. We enter into this half circle of diversity, celebrating the ways that we, upright, walking, two-legged wanderers, share with the four-legged, lounging, lunging, and leaping among us with winged warblers, with slithering, sliding, snaky beings, with circling cavorters in a watery world, and with those who carry their house on their backs. We look so different, moving according to the way we were made, yet look at us here in this circle. We are part of one family, sharing one planet, May our celebration bring us into deeper relationship with the diverse beings in the interdependent web of all life, remembering we all have common needs for safety, care, and respect. Welcome to all our siblings gathered here today. As do many Unitarian Universalist congregations, we begin our time together this morning with the lighting of a chalice. I invite Carol Kappa to come forward and light our chalice this morning. The chalice is a symbol of the Unitarian Universalist faith and represents the Unitarian Universalist Association, or UUA. The flaming chalice symbolizes the heritage of our past, the warmth of community, and the light of hope within this church today. Our chalice lighting words today are all animals are our relatives. And it's by Florence Caplow. In a meadow, a small curious fox approaches the camera. We light this chalice in honor of the animal realm. Furred and hoofed, two-legged, four-legged, many-legged banged and clawed, gentle and fierce, and wild and tame. May we remember that all animals are our relatives, worthy of our care and respect. And our opening hymn or, or song today is Old MacDonald. It's a, you have a yellow insert in your uh, order of service. Please stand if you're able and so moved and join our song leader, Sue Spill. in the process, but you know. <laughs> All right. Please remain standing and join me in our affirmation. Love is the doctrine of this church. The quest of truth is its and service is its prayer. 
to dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge in freedom, to work for justice through action, to serve others in community, to the end that all souls shall grow into harmony with creation, thus do we covenant with one another. You may be seated. Please come forward if you are young at heart or would like to have a close-up view of our Time for All Ages, presented by our magnificent Director of Lifespan Radical Exploration, Nikki Kennedy. Afterwards, we will sing the children back to their seats with as we leave this friendly place. It's number 414 in your gray hymnal. Good morning. Good morning. Man, there's a lot of extra little beings up here today. Did y'all see the excitement they had to come up today? Yeah? Okay, let's try that again. Good morning. Good morning. Awesome. I see lots of animals with you guys today, and I think that's beautiful. So go grab your plushie real fast, Roman. It's okay. Hi, Rusty. So tell me, what are some things that you guys like to do with your pets or with animals? Amelia. I like to bring them on long walks. You like to bring them on long walks. I like that. That is a huge clock in the back. That's right. What else do we like to do with animals? Cadence? I like to sit and watch them. You like to sit and watch them? Roman? Snuggle. Snuggle. Jane? Play with them? Chloe, what do you like to do? You have some cute animals in your life. What do you do with them? Go on walks? Yours are pretty good snugglers, too. Yeah. Yes, Tao? You're going to go get your animal? Okay. Well, actually, they're up here, so why don't you grab one of them to hold on to? you got to be gentle, and you can put it back. Yes. We, okay, so we're not going to sing Old MacDonald again, but I'm glad you guys enjoyed that. So thank you, worship team, for uh, playing that important song that we all really liked. So you shared with me some things you guys like to do with your pets and your animals. I have a question. Do you ever look at your pet or your animal, and do you know what they're feeling based on how they look? You do? How can you tell? By their, by their face. What do their faces look like? Can y'all show me some of the th facial expressions they may have? Your looks very tired, so you know they're tired. What else? But when he looks tired and his tail's wagging, he's very happy. That's true. What else? What else do you notice about your animals? James. I can't hear you, buddy. The, I can't hear you. The noise that they're making. That's true. Is that what you said? The noises they make? Yeah. Amelia. You can tell by their actions. That's right. Sometimes when it's meal time and they're, they're hungry, they get very excited and can't sit still. Roman? Oh, by their eyelids and their eyes. That's very observant. Chloe, did you have your hand up? Oh, yours are, when yours are hungry, they bark. Have you ever experienced, anybody else ever experienced when your dogs may be hungry? Do they bark? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I like dogs to, don't. your dogs don't bark when they're hungry? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, that's okay. All dogs are different. We don't all do the same thing, just like all people are different, right? Can you sit down and hold this animal for me? I need your help. He needs lots of snuggles. Thank you. So I like to snuggle and talk with my animals. And I like to tell them things. Do you guys ever share things with your animals? Yeah. Yeah. You share? Do you ever have a tea party with your animals? No, you've never had a tea party? Well, how do you guys show your animals, be it stuffed or alive, 
How do you show them that you love them? Amelia? Lots of pets and hugs. Hang on just a second. James? Hang out with them? Do you ever have a cat or a dog lick you? Yeah? Have you ever had a giraffe lick you? Yeah? When you feed a giraffe, you know, I got to go to Fossil Rim the other day, and I could tell the giraffe liked me because he kept licking my hand. Because, I mean, I had food in it. But, but he, knew that, he knew that, you know, that I was going to help take care of it. And there was slimy stuff, but the tongue was so cool. What about a chicken? It was black. The tongue was black. How do you know about a chicken, James? Maybe they follow you around. Have you ever had a pet chicken? Have you helped take care of chickens? Yeah, yeah. Amelia? Your mom got eggs and they all turned out to be roosters, yeah? Yeah, that can happen too. So I wonder this week, how are you going to show your animals that you love them? Tell me one thing you're going to do with them. What are you going to do with your animals to show them that you love them, Rusty? Um, feed them a lot. Feed them a lot? Okay. Are you going to give them water too? Yeah. Yeah? Are you going to give them snuggles? Yeah. Yeah? Yes. Anybody else? Amelia? Yeah. Take care of them and make sure they're safe. That's really important, that isn't it? Keep escaping our house. Do, yeah, that happens sometimes. The animals can get out. Well, I hope your week is full of snuggles with your animals and lots of licks and lots of walks. And I hope you guys have a great week. And thanks for bringing your animals today to share with us. Good morning, Westside. I'm Jane Hardwick, one of the pastoral care team associates. In our community here at Westside, we make time each week to share pieces of our lives with one another. We do this because each person in this community has value. Each person's experience matters. Members of the team can be identified wearing a pastoral care badge Please submit your joys and concerns to the team by completing one of these forms at the welcome desk or emailing us at pastoralcare at westsideuu.org or contacting any member of the team. The other current members of our team are Carol Kappa, Debbie Rake, John Fisher, Brenda McKeon, and Barbara Crotty. Would members of the team please raise your hands so our congregation can see who you are. Thank you. We share our concerns with one another today, knowing that sorrows come to each person's life, knowing that together we offer comfort. As I read your concern, would you please stand or raise your hand so all can know who you are. We have a... a um, a joy and concern at the same time today. So I will read that first. And this is from Sue Anderson. Sue, would you raise your hand? Okay. Every Sunday, a small group of dedicated volunteers greet people at the door and welcome desk. However, we could use a few more volunteers. Please see Sue if you can help out with this easy and fun task. We also share our joys with one another, knowing, too, that joy comes into all of our lives. 
knowing that together our voices can raise in a chorus of celebration. And again, please stand or raise your hand. Me. Okay. If you have people in, um, or pets that you want to remember or honor in a special way, please pick up a Lights of Love pamphlet on the black counter that's just to the left of the welcome desk. Community Health Care, formerly named Community Hospice, is providing luminarias. If you can donate $25 for a luminaria to be uh, dedicated in your loved one's name, you can come to see that incredible Lights of Love on November 14th. Donations go to this nonprofit nonprofit organization to help people who need palliative care or hospice care. So if you have people in your life, people or pets in your life that you want to honor or have a memorial for, this would be a wonderful way to do it and you can go and see a sea of love on November 14th. As we hold all the joys and concerns among us, both those spoken and unspoken, let us sing together, Bless the Beast and the Children, by Vorzin and Botkin. The words are projected on the screen and on an insert in your order of service. Before our meditation starts, oops, I need to jump in with one minute. There's a, a fall festival at Fairmount Park from 3 to 5 on next Sunday. 
and they're looking for volunteers. See Diane Jones if you have any questions. Good morning. My name is Diane Austin, and I'm one of the meditation group leaders here at Westside. I now invite you to relax your mind and body and join in a time of meditation. I'll begin with an introduction before we move into a minute of silence. Our bell will sound to signal the start of your own meditation, prayer, or reflection and it will sound again at the end. Our introduction this morning is Blessing of the Animals, St. Francis Day by Thomas Rhodes. You birds of the air, hawk, sparrow, and laughing jay, you embody freedom itself. Delight us with your song, astound us with feats of migration, Grant us your perspective, for too often our horizon is limited, and we are blind to the full results of our actions. You worms of the earth, ants, beetles, spiders, and centipedes, you are the essential but oft-forgotten strand in nature's web. Through you, the cycle is complete. Through you, new life arises from old. Remind us of our humility, for the wheel of life does not turn around us. We are not the axle, but merely spokes, no less than unseen, unknown, and shunned companions such as yourselves. You creatures of the field and wood, and marsh and desert, bear and bison, skunk and squirrel, weasel and wolf. Too often we have sacrificed your homes in the name of progress, clear cutting the forest to fill our desire, or covering the earth with tarmac, cement, and suburban lawns. Pray that we may remember that the earth was not given for our needs alone. And what we do to you, we eventually do to ourselves. You animals of the farm, horse and cow, pig and fowl, willingly or not, you give your very lives for us, your milk for our nourishment, your flesh for our sustenance. Yet too often we forget that the meat on our tables was once as alive as we are. Forgive our willful ignorance and remind us constantly to give thanks for your sacrifice. You dearest companions in our lives, dogs and cats, hamsters and goldfish, you who are with us today, and you who, always, who will always be present in our memories. You have enriched our lives in so many ways, endured our shortcomings with calm acceptance, taught us something of our humanity, taught us how to love. May we hold you in our hearts throughout the days of our lives.
May it be so, blessed be, and amen. Here at Westside, we practice our UU faith in a variety of ways. One of those ways is by giving 100% of our gifts to our weekly collection, unless otherwise designated, to support organizations who carry out our transcendent values of compassion, justice, and equality. Westside's offering for the month of October goes to the Texas Equal Access Fund. The TEA Fund is a nonprofit providing crucial support for reproductive health care access. Surge individuals in the North, East, and Panhandle regions who face financial barriers to accessing abortion and other reproductive health care. In September 2021, Texas banned abortions up to about six weeks of pregnancy. TEA Fund went into action and began funding abortions outside of Texas. On June 23, 2022, TEA Fund staff and volunteers worked intensively to fund all current clients' abortions as the decision on Roe v. Wade was imminent. With no clear idea on whether TEA Fund could continue funding out-of-state abortions legally, it paused operations at the end of June 20, in 2023. Cindy Fountain was a volunteer that day. She remembers all day. It was an incredible collective of compassion and action. I was both grateful and designated, devastated at its conclusion. Thanks to an injunction from a federal court in February 2023, TEA Fund resumed funding out-of-state abortions, and recognizing the broader impact of abortion bans, including the effects on pregnant people not seeking an abortion, it has expanded programming to support Texans in various aspects of their reproductive lives. This includes contraception, disease testing, counseling, and providing infant care resources. Last July, as TEA Fund presented its documentary on crisis pregnancy centers, Westside held a diaper drive for infant care resources. Please donate as you can to support this organization as it fiercely advocates for the right to access all reproductive health options. If you are giving toward your stewardship pledge, please use the envelopes at the bottom of the bowl as it is passed. Now, let us enjoy the musical offering Circle of Life by Elton John, performed by Yuki.
We thank you so much for putting into practice the spiritual virtue of generosity. And we thank you, Key. Our giving connects us to the wider web of our community. And thank you for also keeping your stewardship com commitment current to keep our congregation's important work going. And I had a reminder, one of the goals that we set up when we had our town hall meeting was to make Westside more visible in the community. And Arts Goggle was a way for us to do this. So I've been asked to acknowledge the people who volunteered at Arts Goggle yesterday. <laughs> representing Westside in the community through acts of love and service. And that's from Davika and Riley Lyles and Diane and Charlie Ford, oops, and any others. <laughs> Our reading today is a poem by Mary Oliver. The dog has run off again, and I should start shouting his name and clapping my hands, but it has been raining all night, and the narrow creek has risen, is a tawny turbulence, is rushing along over the mossy stones, is surging forward with a sweet, loopy music, and therefore, I don't want to entangle it with my own voice, calling, summoning my little dog to hurry back. Look, the sunlight and the shadows are chasing each other. Listen how the wind swirls and leaps and dives up and down. Who am I to summon his hard and happy body, his four white feet that love to wheel and pedal through the dark leaves to come back to walk by my side, obedient. You didn't tell me I was going to have to follow a Mary Oliver poem. And from the intro when she said that I didn't see myself joining an organized religion, in my defense, I did join Unitarian Universalism. <laughs> Don't know how organized you can accuse us of being. So we'll be sharing the photos and such in a couple of minutes, but I did want to kind of give a little intro to our blessings of the animal service. So I invite you to settle into your seat Close your eyes and think about an animal that you have a positive association with. First animal that comes to mind. Think about what it looks like, what it smells like, what it sounds like, what it might feel like to touch. Really engage with this animal with multiple senses. Maybe it's a specific animal that you know or knew in your life. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it's an animal you're familiar with from documentaries or movies or stories. Feel the dryness of the scales or the softness of the fur or the smoothness of the skin. Take a deep breath and remember or imagine what it smells like. And let out the breath. You may open your eyes. Unitarian Universalists uh, and before us, the Unitarians and the Universalists, have a long history of including animal in our ethics. If you do even just a little bit of research, some of our big names jump out immediately as advocates for animal rights and vegetarianism. Names like Henry David Thoreau, Clara Barton, Susan B. Anthony, Russell Elevin. My favorite, <laughs> my favorite story of UU heroes and animal rights, though, comes from Mary Wollstonecraft. Um, she wrote a book back in 1792 called A Vindication of the Rights of Women. It had the radical idea in it that maybe women should be treated the same as men. And if you kind of think about it, if you had a book sort of come out, you, there may be a certain kind of academic and popular reception to an idea like that being discussed in public. Now rewind that about 232 years. <laughs> And one response that she received of Benny 
was from a, um, we'll say, gentleman named Thomas Taylor of London. And he wrote and published a response that he called a vindication of the rights of brutes. And now he disagreed vehemently with Mary that women should be treated the equal of man. So his book argued as a joke that if women deserve to be treated equally with men, then so did animals. That's the brutes in the title, Vindication of the Rights of Brutes. So that's his sort of jokey, fun response, is that if you women want rights, I guess we have to give it to the animals too. And you can still find that entire text online if you'd like, uh, if you ever wanted to give it a read. Even the first edition uh, is scanned in in Google Books. Although if you do read that first edition, quick reminder, S's back then, uh, if they're not at the end of a word, they're not like the sort of S we're used to. They're sort of a weird, like, extended F without, like, the little line in the middle. Um, so when you see the word impress, it's not impress. It's impress, <laughs> even though it looks like there's an F in it. Um, anyway, so there is a line from the intro to that first edition that made me laugh when I read it. And remember, this is like a satire. Thomas thinks he's making a joke here. So he's stating that the point of this book is to establish the equality of all things as to their intrinsic dignity and worth. Intrinsic dignity and worth. Why does that sound so familiar? Is this where we Unitarian Universalists got our first principle from? To recognize the inherent dignity of worth of all people? I mean, I know Thomas was joking here, but what a fantastic choice of words for, again, 1792. Mary Wollstonecraft, of course, thought that that was a fantastic idea, that of course animals should be treated according to their intrinsic dignity and worth. So way to go, Mary. And we call this service the blessing of the animals. The only authority I can claim to bless these animals with is the love that we all share for them. All of the animals that are blessed here today are blessed every day. They're blessed with a home, with a family, with food, with a much easier life than if they weren't with you. But today we take time on purpose and with intention to recognize that inherent worth and dignity of our animal companions. They're with us on our best days and on our worst days. Sometimes they're the cause of those worst and best days. <laughs> So when you get home, if you have any pets at, the, and, at home, give any of those dogs, cats, reptiles, rodents, birds, any pets you may have, the love you feel in this room from all of us today. And maybe give them one extra little treat just from me. Many members, friends, and guests of Westside have graciously shared their photos of their beloved animal companion. If you submitted a picture when your pet or pets show up, Either raise your hand, or stand, or make whatever noise it would make in the old McDonald's song, so we can put a human face to the very sweet animal faces that will shortly be on the screen. Um, I'm going to do my best to pronounce their names accurately, but do forgive me in advance if I miss it. Yeah, this is a... Uh... Yeah, we're starting with, with John here today. This is Leah Gertrude Fisher von Funky Town, a real Fort Worth dog. <laughs> Classic dog, black on brown and beige, short fur. Uh, even though she's not a puppy anymore, I would find it very hard to say no to those puppy dog eyes. Next up, we have Colt and Super Sugar Bear, loved by Darren Cote. We have a golden retriever in its natural habitat, any water it can find. And uh, Super Sugar Bear is the corgi, and the joy on their faces to be with each other and Darren is just impossible to hide. And this here is Ella. The, um, I need to get this right, this is a tongue twister. The Black Lab Lap Dog of Dana and Greg Tooley. While maybe a little bigger than what most would consider a lap dog, Ella doesn't let that stop her. And I can't think of a better way to get warm on those rare Texas winter nights than to snuggle up in a blanket with a good dog like that. And here we have Daisy, loved by Angie Goins. 
a perfect little Scotty with gray fur and a white face lounging what I'm assuming is the favorite spot in the house, a soft dog bed. And whenever I see a dog that comfortable on a dog bed like that, I have to physically stop myself from buying a human-sized bed. <laughs> they do sell them. Next up, we have Lawson, courtesy Judith Vaughn. This little white chihuahua in a red hoodie is well-loved. And if Lawson is anything like my mother-in-law's dog, he keeps the house safe from any potential intruder, like the mail carrier or a pizza delivery driver. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, uh, yeah, it's not just dogs. We've got, we've got all kinds. Uh, these two cats are Pepper and Augie. Pepper is the latest in a long line of rescue kitties taken in by Diane and Charles Nixon. And Augie likes to claim any new sort of pad that gets spread out on any horizontal surface, including um, Christmas tree skirts. Now, less of a traditional pet and more of a uh, maybe mascot or frequent visitor to our garden, we have Rusty the Squirrel, who shows up anytime peanuts are on offer. And it is, of course, fantastic to see a monarch butterfly in our garden. Thanks to all of our fantastic volunteers that work so hard to make this space. I don't think we managed to get a picture of the horned toad that hangs around, but you'll spot him if you're out there often enough. Next up, we have a dog and cat combo, Ziggy and Rosie, loved by Rebecca, Ramona, and Charlotte Witherow. Ziggy looks happy to be involved with whatever the girls are doing, and whatever Rosie has her eyes set on looks like trouble. <laughs> Now these two dignified cats are Libby and Macy, who hold down the fort at Gail and Russell Elvin's home in Chicago. <laughs> While they look quite dignified in these pictures, I know cats too well to assume that they're on their best behavior all the time. Now here we see the Monroe family of fur and feathers, Scooby, Marigold, Lefty, and Indy. Amelia Lawson, Linda, and Jeff Monroe have their hands full with this menagerie, three dogs and a bird. Might be a sitcom from the 90s, if I'm remembering right. <laughs> and this is Elliot, beloved of Linda and Myron Ice. He's loving life as an only kitty, and we celebrate that he's still with us three years after being diagnosed with a tumor that should have shortened his life considerably. And here we have Copper, pictured here with floppy ears, a big smile, and a blue bandana. This is the dog of the house for Jay, Allison, Matthew, and Romus uh, Islas Burke. And what a great color coat, Copper just like the name. And this is Charlie, who apparently couldn't sit still for the photo. <laughs> and Charlie is already your best friend, even if you don't know it yet. And they are at home with Lisa and Jim Franey. She's currently undergoing some very intense and challenging treatment for heartworm. This is especially rough for her because, as you can see, she's a very active dog. And as part of the treatment, she has to stay on bed rest for two months. So best of luck staying in that bed to Charlie. Now, this wasn't a contest. <laughs> but Gwen Genius does win Best Pet Name 2024 <laughs> with Trouble Rambo. That's not a typo. <laughs> That's the best name. Um, this is a blue Russian cat. Uh, now, I know this is called a blue Russian cat. To me, the fur looks a little more gray than blue, but that's OK. And if, if you thought I was done with the name, we're not. Uh, Gwen's piano student prefers a ver different version of the name, Treble Rainbow. And Carol, Kappa, and Sue Spell's current cats on the left there are Bailey and Munchkin. Their cat, uh, <clears throat> pardon, their cat Ginger passed away in July of this year, and their dog Viscotti passed away in February of 2022. Rest in peace, Viscotti and Ginger, two well-loved pets who lived good lives. Next up, we have the cats that allow Yuki and Bert to live with them. 
And those eyes, those really big eyes, just make me want to scratch their little chins. And uh, this is my dog and Melissa's dog, Kizzy uh, Traskazar, pictured here. Uh, her full name, her full first name is Tisiphone, one of the Furies from Greek mythology. But instead of punishing the wicked, Kizzy delights in lounging on chairs and beds. The bigger, the better. And if she has a superpower, it's that her stomach can tell time to the nearest minute. <laughs> and here we have another mixed cat and dog home. Phineas and Teddy live a well-loved life with Cadence and Caroline Nixon. Their fur is kind of a similar shade of beige, which to me is adorable. Devika and Riley Lyles have a, a trio here. Duke, Elu, and Tiger. Duke is the tuxedo cat, which is the perfect kind of name for that cat. Uh, Elu is the gray one kind of in the middle, and Tiger is the calico. They are fantastic cats, and the good news is that with three of them, chances are very good that at least one of them would let me pet it. <laughs> nope. Oh. <laughs> Duke, okay. Got it. Duke. 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 Okay. <laughs> And bringing up our caboose today is Olive, May, and Grand Dog Mackie, loved by Chloe, Jana, and Donald Kennard. All three are pictured on some kind of adventure, whether it's a car ride or leaving paw prints in the snow. And thank you for everyone. Yeah, round of applause for all those lovely pets. Thank you for everyone that was able to send in pictures to the kids that brought in their stuffed animals. And if you didn't get a chance to participate this year, that's okay. We'll do it again next year. Um, but until then, you can come show me or anyone else in this room pictures of your pets on your phone. We'd love to see them. And <laughs> continue blessing your animals with food and love until next year's service. And with love in our hearts and treats in our hands, please stand as able for our closing hymn, number 175 in the gray hymnal, we celebrate the web of life. Two verses or? Two? We're going to we're going to go with two verses today. Two verses. Twice. Sing it through twice. Sorry. Our closing words today are, May We Leave This Place, by Betts Weinecke. May we leave this place seeking an uncharted and freely chosen way to wholeness, knowing we have companions along the way. The chalice is now extinguished and but its light lives on in the minds and hearts and souls of each one of you. Carry that flame with you as you leave this place and share it with those you love, with, with those you know, and most especially with those you have yet to meet. Please join me in the congregational closing. In peace, seeking justice, go in peace, committed to equal rights and opportunities for all. Go in the peace that is created when together we build communities of deep solidarity, deep compassion, and fierce, unrelenting love. Go in peace. May it be so. Blessed be. And amen. <laughs>